Hey students, we're going to go ahead and try to record the very last segment of this cardiovascular lecture. So let me share my screen. This is another common thing that you're going to see in this country, and you'll probably be given medicines every day for this type of thing. What we're going to first to start to talk about is a condition inside the body called atherosclerosis. Athero right here, meaning plaque or gunk or goo, which means this crap right here inside the wall of that artery. And once it gets there, it becomes hardened called sclerosis or it becomes sclerosed, atherosclerosis. What we want is for your healthy arteries to be patent and wide open. That's what we want. But unfortunately, over time, with the way people eat and smoke cigarettes and don't control diseases, then you can get an artery that gets blocked up or occluded or clogged. And the plaque buildup builds up in the lining of the artery wall. And blocked arteries can lead to stroke and heart diseases and other things. So that's not good. And that happens over time. So atherosclerosis is a chronic medical condition that occurs over time when the lumen or the channel of the artery um, becomes occluded. Let me make a note here. Um, becomes occluded. Um, with plaque. This will decrease the amount of oxygen delivery to that area. So we don't want to have this gunk right here. We don't want it, but there's a lot of people in this country who have it. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Atherosclerosis. Now, it said it can cause a cardiac disease, and that is true. And there are coronary arteries. You have them. I have them. We all have them. And they're, they are the very small arteries right here that deliver oxygen to the myocardium or the heart muscle. And they're very small, but they need to be patent. And they're so small that they could get clogged up with fats, cholesterol, sugar, and things like that. So they they can get occluded. And if they get blocked, so I'll just put some blockages in there. There's a blockage. There's a blockage right there. Then if you are known to have this and they have seen that, that's called coronary artery disease, C-A-D. Let me make a, a mention here. Okay. So if a coronary artery, one of them is partially occluded. And if we were to go back, let's just go back and let's look at the previous picture. <clears throat> it was partially occluded like this one. And this one's not all the way occluded either, but it's almost. But if you have some blockages, <clears throat> in your coronary arteries, but they're not all the way blocked, partially occluded. When that client gets active, and when I say active, I mean walking around, climbing the steps, dancing, cutting the grass, having sex, uh, going back and forth, doing the laundry, then he or she will experience cardiac chest pain due to decreased oxygen to the myocardium. And let me make a note here. Hang on. Myocardium. And this chest pain, cardiac chest pain, is called angina pectoris. Now, remember, they're partially occluded. And when he's active and his heart's beating faster and we can't get oxygen to the heart muscle like we want to because you've got partially occluded coronary arteries, then he will start to have cardiac chest pain called angina pectoris. Now, the interesting thing, this might be his first attack of it ever. And if that's the case, he's going to the hospital. If it's a second attack 
of it or whatever where he's had it before, then I'm going to ask him, do you have your sublingual nitroglycerin? And I'll explain that to you. But the good thing about having it angina pectoris, if there is anything good about it, is that the pain will begin with activity, but will go away with rest and nitroglycerin. Okay. That's the one good thing about having that artery not all the way occluded is that if you were to stop what you're doing, if you are active and you have the chest pain, stop what you're doing and take your nitroglycerin. And if it is truly an attack of angina pectoris, the pain will go away. But if the coronary artery is totally occluded, totally blocked, then the client will experience cardiac chest pain at any time. He could just be laying there sleeping and wake up with chest pain. He could just be um, standing at the stove cooking and have chest pain. He could be sitting there reading the paper and have chest pain. He could sit there and work on the internet and have chest pain. So it can come on any time. And the area of the heart that's not getting any blood flow will begin to die due to no oxygen to that portion of the myocardium. Now, let's just go and talk about this again. If it's partially occluded, partially, then the pain comes on when he's active. And he hurts in his chest and it's called angina pectoris. But since it's only partially occluded, the pain will go away when he rests and takes nitroglycerin. That's the one good thing. It will go away because you're, you're going to stop your activity and you're going to open up the blood vessel. But if the coronary artery is totally blocked and your pain comes on at any time, even if you're sleeping, then no oxygen is getting to that portion of the myocardium and that portion of the heart muscle will begin to die. And that's what a myocardial infarction is. Myocardial means heart muscle, infarction means death. So we don't want it all the way blocked because if it's all the way blocked, nitroglycerin will not open it up and rest won't open it up, okay? And I'm going to make a note. <clears throat> no rest. No nitro. Okay. Let's keep going. So a person with coronary artery disease, and I think this is a real good picture right here of all that gunk that got in there. Do you see how that's taken up a lot of room? And how... Red blood cells are trying to flow through here, carrying oxygen. Red blood cells trying to go through here to get wherever they're going. And you can see how that's partially occluded. Well, if we know you have it, and we've seen it, and they've run tests on it, and they know you have it, then the client would benefit from taking vasodilators daily, called a maintenance dose. So if you have this nasty gunk, let's do this. Let's open it up. And if it's at least, if it's not all the way clogged, you can open it up. That's the good thing. Um, now, if you were to take this daily right here to open him up every day, then maybe we could decrease the chance of the chest pain even occurring. And these medicines that open up are called nitrates. And they have the word nitrate in the name. So if you have this nasty gunk and they know you do, you'll be taking daily nitrates to keep your coronary arteries open. Okay. And maybe you won't even have the chest pain. Okay. That's your daily doses. Now, here are some examples of some daily doses. So let's see. We've got nitroglycerin ointment, 2%, 1 inch every six hours. So here's your nitro ointment. It comes in this little, that, that come, if it comes with this little piece of paper here and you measure out, if the doctor said one inch, then you squirt this out like toothpaste 
on here to one inch and then you tape it to the client's skin and he'll get that every six hours so just remember use gloves so you don't absorb the medicine yourself on your skin remove the old patch rotate the sites apply new patch to non-hairy area and tape it to the skin and if that skin has too much hair on it do not shave the skin NCLEX and ATI say no shaving, trim with scissors. That's the better way because they say if you shave, you can nick the skin and then you could get an infection. But in the real world, we do shave. We're just very, very cautious with it. Um, date, time, and initial your patch. So I would go here and I'd say, what is today? 1126 and suppose it's 12 p.m and sl susan livingston okay all right and hopefully that you won't even get your chest pain okay all right something like that but though that's an ointment here's a nitroglycerin patch that's already got the medicine in it transdermal patch means it's going to go through the skin into the bloodstream to have a systemic effect and if you go back Go back one more page. This is systemic too. So number 64, systemic. That's transdermal too. Um, it's just you had to squirt the ointment on the patch itself. But it's still transdermal. It's still the medicines put on the skin, goes through the skin and to the bloodstream to have a systemic effect, mainly at the coronary arteries. The transdermal patch is similar. You put on the skin. It goes through the skin into the bloodstream to have a systemic effect, mainly at the coronary arteries. But the good thing about the patch is it's already got the medicine in it. The same thing applies. Rotate your sites. Take off the old patch. Put on the new patch. Date, time, and initial. Uh, trim hair a very hairy area with scissors, okay? Here are some PO medicines, extended release capsules, ER, extended release. That tells you right there, you can't crush or chew that. Um, and those are going to work over time. So the patch works over time. The ointment works over time. And extended release capsules work over time. And the goal would be to not have the chest pain. To begin with. Okay. Now, let's see. Hang on a minute. So here, here. Here's some other daily doses of nitrates. Um, Just look for nitrate in the generic name. In fact, let's go back. Let's just keep going back and looking for nitrate. Just let's do that. Let's go, go look for the word nitrate. Oh, okay. Nitroglycerin ointment. Nitroglycerin. That's a nitrate. The vasodilator. Nitroglycerin. Nitro. Nitro. Okay. Here's nitroglycerin. Isorcerbod dinitrate. See nitrate? Isorcerbod mononitrate. Okay. This one is 10 milligrams. This one, 60 milligrams. Uh, they are not the same medicine. Isorcerbide dinitrate is not the same thing as isorcerbide mononitrate. But if you just looked here, um, and if the doctor ordered 20 milligrams by mouth twice a day, how many tablets per dose? Well, if the doctor ordered 20 milligrams, and I have 10 milligrams, because it says so right here, in one tablet. And I will give you two tablets per dose. Here, I source or buy mononitrate, 60 milligrams PO every day. How many taps per dose? Well, if the doctor ordered 60, and I have 60, that's in one tablet, then I will give you one tablet of this. Okay, so I always look for nitro nitrates in the name, and it'll tell you they probably got clogged arteries 
and we're trying to keep their arteries open on a daily basis. Okay. So let's just take a look. Let's just take a look what's going on here. Pay attention here. There's a student who had me last quarter. She remembers this lecture. She stopped me in the hallway just the other day and thanked me for this lecture because she was able to spot a heart attack in her own mother because of this lecture. So let's just step away and let's see what's going on. So let's just see someone have this cardiac chest pain called angina. Now, remember, they are probably active at the time. But if it's real bad, they might not even be active. But the pain is very specific. It's going to say it's a very heavy feeling. It's gripping, squeezing, tightening, epigastric pain. Pain in the center of the chest because that's where your heart is. Okay. And it could feel like severe indigestion. So that pain is very specific, especially for the men. They will say, it feels like an elephant's on the chest. I can't breathe. It's heavy. Something's sitting on the center of my chest. It's not an ache. It's not a rip. It's not sharp. It's heavy. And it could feel like really severe indigestion because that's right here in the center of the chest too. And the pain may radiate up the jaw and down the arm. So let me go and erase this. And the pain could go up, that means move, up to the jaw and literally down the arm, okay? And I'm going to be asking him about this pain. Then, because your heart is deep inside of you, you could have pain in the middle upper back. And then he'll be all diaphoretic and clammy. And he can experience nausea because it's close to the stomach. And he'll be anxious. So look at how specific this pain is. It's heavy. It's squeezing. It's gripping in the epigastric area. You do need to know that term. It could feel like the worst indigestion he's ever had. It could The pain could move up his jaw and down the arm. It could go into the back. And then he could feel sick to his stomach. And he's going to look like crap. Diaphoretic and clammy. So I want you to recognize those cues. Okay, so let's just let's just go in there and let's do it. Number one, client complains of chest pain. All right, watch me in action. He says, I hurt. I said, where in your chest? Point to me. That's the first thing I'm, I want to know where. Then I'm going to ask him, what does that pain feel like to, to you? Does it move into your jaw or down or down your arm? Do you have pain in your upper middle back? Then I'm going to look at him. Does he look pale and clammy? I said, you have nausea. You feel like you want to throw up. Then I'm going to ask, so if, I, if he says yes, that yes to all of that. Well, wait a minute. What if he says, if I said, have you ever had this type of pain before? And what if he says, no, I've never had this before. So at some point in time, you're going to have it for the first time. So if the answer is no, call 911. Because he's having his first cardiac issue, probably. If you ask him, and the answers are yes, and you ask, have you had this pain before? And he says yes. Ask him if he has his emergency nitroglycerin. The sublingual kind. That's the PRN, emergency vasodilator. If so, administer it stat. And I will show you how to do that on the next couple of pages. Okay, so if he's never had this pain before, you call 911. If he has had the pain before, then ask him, where is your emergency nitro? That's the medicine we need. Okay. Okay. So, um. Here he is, and let's just re-evaluate this again. A client with coronary artery disease, CAD, may have an attack of cardiac chest pain called angina, 
even if he takes his daily vasodilators, dilators, even if he puts the patch on, even if he takes the extended release tablet, he still could get the chest pain. We hope he won't, but he still could. Now, if the chest pain occurs, so he, now he's actively hurting right here. This is not good. Then we need this emergency nitrate to open the coronary arteries now. Okay, so I need to be able to determine, are you having just an attack of chest pain that will go away when you rest and take your nitro? If so, good. Or if you're having a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, then the pain does not go away with rest and nitroglycerin. That's the difference. And if I can get my hands on your emergency nitro, we'll make a decision about this, whether or not you got to go to the hospital. Now, remember, if it's his first time, he's going to the hospital. If he's had this before and he's got his emergency nitro, I'm going to show you how to administer that uh, and without sending him to the hospital. Okay, so keep going. So there he is. Let's walk you through it. He's known coronary artery disease. He experiences angina pectoris. He's had this before. He says, quick, I'm having that pressure in my chest, get my nitro. Here is how we give it. Yes, you do need to know it. Okay, so for angina. So there he is. Now, so watch me over here on the side. Suppose it's 12 p.m. He has his chest pain. I'll say CP for chest pain. First thing you're going to have him do is rest. Stop, stop. Sit down. Sit down. To get off your feet, sit down. And then ask him if he's got his nitro, his emergency sublingual nitro. If he does, get it. Give him tablet number one underneath the tongue. Okay? And let it dissolve. And don't go away. Do not go anywhere. You are not leaving him. Okay? This is not the time for you to go on break. So you're going to administer one tablet sublingually every five minutes for a maximum of three tablets. So here's your first tablet. You're going to reevaluate him in only five minutes. So 12.05. And you stood there with him. And what if the chest pain is gone? Well, then you opened up the artery. And we are done. We are done. What you had was an attack of, of angina. Because it went away. Attack of angina. You do not have to go to the hospital. I'm glad we got your emergency medicine. So see, this is for the guy who's had this before and has this medicine. So I don't have to give you three tablets. I could give you three, but if it goes away after one, then we're done and you don't have to go to the hospital because you have an attack of angina now. Angina now, your pain is gone. Okay, so let's go back here and let's say at 12.05, I evaluated him and the chest pain continues. So it continues. Why? Well, we're not done. Now I'm going to give you tablet number two sublingually. I will stay there with you and I will reevaluate you at 10 after 12. What if the chest pain is gone? Well, then we are done with this emergency medicine and you had an attack of angina. You do not have to go to the hospital. Okay. Okay. What if at 12.10, the chest pain continues. Well, then I'm going to go down here. Then at 12, let's see, 12.10, we'll give you number three. And if the pain goes away within the third time, then you don't have to go to the hospital. Your emergency medicine worked. I'll reevaluate you at 1215. If the chest pain continues after the third dose, we're calling 911. 911.
one one. So there's two times that you call nine one one on this. You call nine one one every time for someone having this for the very first time, and they have no medicines that they can give themselves. <clears throat> you call nine one one on the guy who's known to have it, and despite you sitting him down and giving him his three nitroglycerins over a period of 15 minutes total, the pain doesn't go away. You call 911 because it's probably a heart attack at that point. You do not have to call 911 if somewhere in those three tablets, the pain goes away. Okay. So hopefully you understand that. I'll make you answer questions about it. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay. Um, nitroglycerin is supplied in a dark container, as you can see, because heat and light destroy the medicine. So we've got to keep it in a in a cool, dark place. Um, and read over this. Um, well, I'll just read real quickly, but always store in a cool, dark place to maintain its potency. Carry this with you at all times in the event you experience angina. Here's your emergency way to take it we already talked about that never keep past the expiration date get the refills before you run out this is real important tell the patient if you notice an increase in the frequency of your attacks of angina notify your cardiologist your situation is worsening and you can actually take this um, sublingual nitroglycerin before strenuous exercises uh, like if you know you're going to get out there and cut the grass and you're going to have a chest pain, then take that before you go cut the grass and open up your artery so you can cut the grass without pain. Or taking a walk or having sex. Some men say, I want to have sex, but I get the chest pain. Well, then take a nitroglycerin before you have sex and maybe you can get through the sex act without having the chest pain. Okay, <clears throat> So there's that. So make sure you understand that, please. Okay, one couple more slides here. And nitrates, because they are vasodilators, can give you a headache. It's called a nitro headache, normal. Uh, you will, the patient will get used to it, um, but it's called vesophagia headache. And uh, that's pretty common, but he does get used to it. Since it does vasodilate, then it lowers the blood pressure and he could have orthostatic hypotension when he goes from a sitting to a standing position and he could get dizzy and he could fall. So uh, watch out because it's going to drop the blood pressure. So um, tell him to get up slowly. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Okay. All right. Now, two more slides and we're done. And you might say, well, Miss Livingston, why in the world am I looking at a penis here on a cardiac slide? <laughs> All right. Well, I want you to understand something. And the men are not going to be happy with this. But if a man has coronary artery disease in his coronary arteries, and he has atherosclerosis in there, if he has that in the heart, then he could very well have atherosclerosis leading to the penis. So if you look down here, look at all these arteries. Now, I don't want you to know all these arteries. I don't, I don't know all the arteries in here, but I do know that the last thing, I, they're little, and I don't want them to get clogged up because they can get clogged up too. And so there's your, he's all clogged up down there, okay? And um, that means he's going to have a difficult time getting blood flow to the penis to have an erection because the last I checked, so we'll go here, last I checked, is to get this thing hard or erect, he's got to get blood flow down here and lots of it so this thing can stand at attention. <laughs> That's what he's wanting it to do. But if he's got blockages in here, then you can't get the blood flow down there because it can't get past the blockages. So he will want to take a vasodilator for sure that is effective in opening the blood vessels leading to the penis. And there are vasodilators that are specially good down here. Sildenafil, 
Tadalafil, and Vardenafil. And we've all heard of them as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra. Now, here's a hint. The generic name ends in Phil, F-I-L. And the way I think of it is I think fill the penis with blood. Sildenafil, fill the penis with blood. Tadalafil, fill the penis with blood. Vardenafil, fill the penis with blood. How? They so dilate those arteries down there. But, but, and here's the thing that he is not going to like, and I'm going to go get another color. He is not going to like this at one single bit because I'll tell you why. If he has coronary artery disease already in his coronary arteries and he takes nitrates daily to prevent the chest pain and they are known to lower blood pressure because any vasodilator opens it up, lowers the pressure. So if he's taking daily nitro to have opened up coronary arteries, and his blood pressure can be running a little low anyway, then if we go and give him these fill medicines that vasodilate, then that's going to drop the blood pressure too. And now you've got two medicines on board that could drop your blood pressure to a dangerously low level. So if he takes the nitrates daily for his chest pain, and he wants to take one of these fill drugs, it's contraindicated. We will not, cannot give you both because the combination of two vasodilators can cause a dangerous drop in blood pressure, which could lead to unconsciousness or cardiac arrest. Okay? You have to understand that. So if you look at the very last slide here, here's sildenafil, fill the penis with blood. And if you turn it over on the back, it says, do not take with nitrates. No way, no how are you taking a vasodilator here for your erectile dysfunction and taking, so if you do the vasodilator here, it decreases the blood pressure. And if you're going to take a nitrate, for the chest pain, and that's a vasodilator, vasodilate, D-I-L, then that's going to drop the BP. And it could be fatal for him. So absolutely no way, no how. He'll have to talk to his doctor. It is, I don't know what the answer is. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not the expert. Um, so... I think that concludes our lecture on cardiac. And it does. Yay, we're done. Okay, guys. Thank you. I'm glad I get the rest of my mouth. Thanks. <laughs>